Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. We have some of the awesome news coming from the Kharkiv region, not far away from Kupensk. There Ukraine started a counterattack, but I'm gonna tell you about it a little later, because now we have the breaking news about the North Korean forces, which could potentially take the part in the war in Ukraine on the Russian side. And yesterday I told you that, that there were no any real proofs that those soldiers are definitely now training in the Russian camps, but today we have those. So at first this video appeared showing allegedly the North Korean soldiers in one of the Russian military training facilities. Here's the Russian flag definitely in its center. So quite a lot of the soldiers, I believe that those are the North Koreans. I'm 99% sure about it. Well, to clarify it by 100%, we need some of the translator because they were speaking some of the different language than the Russian, then they were marching. Experts already allocated the coordinates of the military facility those soldiers were in, and it is located not far away from North Korea in Primoria region of Russian Federation. Some of the soldiers were even spotted near the building, and you can clearly see them on satellite image. We also have this video showing many of the soldiers looking like Asians and they obtained some of the provisions from the Russian army. They're wearing the Russian camouflage uniform and they speak some interesting language. So I guess that those are definitely North Korean soldiers. At, at least the comments for the videos are saying that those are the North Koreans because they speak Korean language. And yes, Russia obtained lots of the new infantry. I would say the quality of the image could be much better actually. For the first time I found the news about the North Korean soldiers on the ground news, I check this platform every day to be updated on Ukraine and not only. Their application at the website lets you compare how the media is framing any given story worldwide and get context of each source. I really believe in what they are doing, so I encourage you to subscribe for the ground news platform using my personal link, it's ground.news/dennis, or scan the QR code available on the screen. So with the latest news update, we have the confirmation from the South Korean intelligence that North Korea is definitely sending the troops to Russia for the further war in Ukraine. And you see that 176 sources reported about that event. I think that it became the top news around the Ukrainian topic. Lower you can check all the news sources or you may find them on the left. Even Russian news report about it. But from what I can see, only the Russian opposition media mentioned that. For example, Medusa, they have the high factuality and they were forced to leave Russia. Now they're based in Riga, Latvia. And this is the article where they clarify the number. 12,000 North Korean soldiers are being sent or up to be sent to Russia for the war in Ukraine, again according to the South Korean intelligence. So again, the news are not just coming from Ukraine, they're also coming from the intelligence of the South Korea. And remember how Putin visited North Korea several months ago? They agreed on that topic by that time. And they have more data that 2,600 soldiers will be sent to the Kursk region, the region where Ukraine started its offensive operation on the Russian territory. So it seems like after all, Russia is unable to push Ukrainian forces out without the help from North Korean friends. And let's check something else. Well, for example, military.com. I never checked it out myself, but here I have the date about it. It is central for the bias distribution. It has the high factuality and the ownership, as you can see. Corporation Randstad Holding, and let's click on it. We are on their page. Again, all of the sources mostly rely on South Korean intelligence. But if we go lower, actually Ukraine was the first one to report about the North Korean soldiers, even on Ukrainian territory. And I told you about it in one of my videos that on October the 3rd, Ukrainian missile strike hit one of the training facility on the occupied territory of the Donetsk Oblast and there were some of the casualties among the officers of the North Korea because they were sent there for getting familiar about the actual battle zone. And I guess the familiarization course went well for them. Guys, I subscribe for the ground news not just for Ukrainian topic, but I also want to find some of the blind spots of what is happening around the world without the main mainstream media coverage. Plus, the ground news gives you more data about the conflicts around the world, like in Ukraine, or for example, Israel Hamas or Israel Hezbollah conflict. Here you may see all of the related news for that topic and some of the unique content, like for example, a very interesting video shown by Israeli drone flying towards the apartment of the leader of Hamas. 
and how he was basically zeroed so the content which I cannot show you on YouTube you may also check out over here. The Ground News is not being funded by any sort of the big media corporations so they rely just on our subscriptions. You will not find any kind of the clickbait advertisements on their website or application. That is why I encourage you to subscribe for the Ground News. You may use my personal link in the video description below. It's ground.news Dennis. Or just scan the QR code available on the screen. All of my followers get 40% of the Vantage plan. Guys, by supporting the team of the Ground News, you also support the job that I do on YouTube because we're in a long-term cooperation with the Ground News on this channel. So Ground News, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Now let's go back to the topic. So for now, it's like official information that North Korea is definitely willing or already sent their soldiers to the Russian Federation for the training. We have even the official statement from the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Turner, in a letter to the President Biden. These troops movements are alarming and are extreme escalation in the conflict in Ukraine. They require an immediate response from the United States and NATO allies to avoid widening conflict. Well, we already see that unfortunately Ukraine has to fight against many of the enemies, not just Russia. Belarus, the state which presented its military and its territory for the intervention into Ukraine, by the way, Belarus obtained the nuclear weaponry. Russia itself, which has enormous army, enormous resources and also nuclear weaponry. North Korea, the state which sent millions of the artillery shells to the Russian Federation plus ballistic missiles and by the way it also has nukes. Iran, which transferred the drone technologies and actual drones to Russia plus the spare parts. And Iran is also close to develop its nuclear weaponry. Yes, in this moment if we speak about the armies, Ukraine is in direct confrontation just with Russia, but everything might change in the coming future then the North Korean soldiers will take a direct part in the war. But you know what? Russians also do have the national minorities like Burats who are Asians. And according to the information which comes from Ukraine, North Korean soldiers will be deployed in Burat camps. So Russians may say that those are not the North Korean soldiers, those are our Burats. Some of the media sources immediately report about the possible future miscommunication between North Koreans and Russians because they don't know the language of each other. But actually, Actually, they don't need to. North Korean soldiers will be used as the prisoners of Russia, as Wagner used them during the storming of Bakhmut. For those guys, it's a one-way ticket they will go to the most hard spots to the straightforward mid attacks. At the same time, then the most experienced and organized regular Russian army will attack from the flanks. This strategy Russia used many times with their prisoners and now it's time for the North Korean soldiers. So after all, we shouldn't underestimate the threat. Well, it also means that the losses inside the Russian army are absolutely huge. They are struggling with the new army men coming. Even with the rise in the salary for the average Russian soldier, still there are not enough volunteers. And Putin is actually forced to make some sort of the deal with the North Korean dictator. Luckily for Putin, Kim Jong-un also doesn't like his people and willing to send them to Kaput in Ukraine. Meanwhile, the representative of the Russian foreign ministry in Vladivostok, it's also not far away from North Korea, commented on the news about the North Korean soldiers saying that, are you scared? Strashna, but later on they deleted this post because by saying that they actually confirmed the deployment of the North Korean troops in Russia for now. Meanwhile, North Korea shared those images of the drone which was shut down as they say. However, I don't see any traces of it being shut down. Maybe Maybe they used the electronic warfare. So they claim that the drone came from the South Korea, so it's the South Korean spy drone. Is there any sort of the spy equipment here? Well, it's hard to say really. No cameras, and nothing. Maybe this antenna? But it could also be some sort of the hum for the landing gear. Right now to the military map update. As I told you, we have some of the good news that Ukraine started the counteroffensive. It was yesterday and it is today. Yes, just a single true line, but Ukraine has capabilities to push Russians away. I believe in that because I know what kind of the forces were sent there. For Ukraine, it's actually crucial to maintain the supply road under control. Now Russians cut it, but Ukraine in the future may return it back. I hope that I'm not wrong about the case, because if Russians cut the supply road, the only 
only possible variant to supply all of those villages is through Kupensk. But basically in Kupensk there's just a single bridge for this purpose. For now Russians keep it alive because they want to propel forward but in the future they may cut it and by doing so the large group of the Ukrainian army will be over here I would say jammed, not trapped by jammed. Some of the pontoon bridges are required in this case to cross the Oskol river. As for this particular place near Tsinkova, Russians already cut the bridge so Ukraine is unable to send reinforcements from this area. The only possible variant is to send them over here or from the south. But from the south it's also kind of difficult because Russians cut this bridge as well. So two of those bridges were cut and if we go more to the south you will see that there are simply not enough good roads, probably some of the filled roads, that's it. Yeah, there is one secondary road, but it's not really good. So the logistics for the Ukrainian army in this entire region is under the question. But now Ukraine sends some of the reinforcements via Kupensk probably, and we'll see how this counteroffensive operation will go in the future. Previously, there was the report that Russians managed to get to Kruglakivka. This is the Oskar River, the same place. Ukraine started a counteroffensive here, but now we have the latest information that Ukraine was capable to repel the Russian forces from this side. Russians, as usual, are losing tons of the vehicles, tons of the troops. The Russian defense ministry has already reported that they've took Kruglakivka under control, but it is just fake and the Russian Z bloggers are saying about it, that they are not in this place. I switched to the satellite image just to show the cities for you because I think it's better to use satellite in this case. The situation in the Chasov Yar is quite concerning. Russians broke through Ukrainian defense, not just they crossed the river, but they also crossed the Ukrainian defense lines. As you can see, Ukraine had the defense in this place. It is shown in blue, so those blue lines were crossed by the Russian army. There is also some of the defense in this area and over here, but not enough to protect the city. So in the coming days or weeks, we're gonna see the advancement of the Russian forces from two of the sides or maybe from three of the sides. Plus, they continue to use the aviation bombs to demolish the Ukrainian defense positions in the city itself or in the town it's better to say because it's not that big. Well, we have what we have, guys. Russians still have initiative on the front lines. The AMK mapping source says even more that Russian forces propelled forward south from the Chasov Yar and entered the outskirts of the city. Well, Russians not just move in Chasov Yar, but they also advanced in Klishivka. So it was yesterday and it is today. They have took the part of the settlement under their control, but still the southeast part is controlled by Ukraine. Well, actually, it's in a gray zone, so the fight is ongoing in this place. Speaking about the Karahov direction, probably one of the most vulnerable directions for Ukraine because there is the risk of the encirclement of the Ukrainian army. Well, as I predicted, Russia is now focused on expanding this bridgehead. They want to reassure that they are controlling this area up to Kurahova and only after that they will not go to Kurahova as I expect. They'll go northbound because there they can try to encircle their Ukrainian group in those villages. They just need to expand this bridgehead for safety or security the reason it's better to say. So it was yesterday and it is today. As you can see, they are expanding. And at the same time, you can see the expansion of the gray zone. It means that Ukraine is withdrawing its forces from those fields. Ukraine will just keep those villages under control and altogether they create agglomeration, which is quite big. And after Russia occupied Vuglidar, they continued to move forward, taking those fields under control. For them, it's quite an easy walk, I would say, because there are no any settlements, so they may propel forward to those villages with no big resistance. From what I know, there are almost no defense lines in this area. The course direction is stable according to the Deep State military map source, but other analytics say that Russia moved towards Suja. They actually attack using tanks and armored vehicles. They lost the armored vehicles, but not the tanks and they've took the part of the ground together with probably one of the settlements. So again we see that Russia took initiative in the Kursk region as well. Yeah, I understand that those are not the great news for Ukraine, but we have what we have and my duty is to tell you about the current situation on the front lines. For now we see that Russia takes the ground, but it's just little by little compared to what it was in the beginning of 2022. Well, it's just uncomparable. In regards about the possible information about Ukraine obtaining its own nukes, which is basically 
fake, it's not real. But it was one more reason for Putin to threaten allies and Ukraine. He said that they will never let Ukraine to obtain nukes. Well, Ukraine is not aiming to obtain those. Ukraine aims towards the NATO membership. By the way, Putin is not going to Brazil for G20 meeting because he is on the warrant. And Brazil didn't say no or yes about the possible arrest of the Russian leader. Biden visited Germany where he met with Chancellor Scholz and they reassured each other in support of Ukraine. But at the same time, Scholz plans to block Ukraine's rapid accession to NATO and rejected the key points of Ukraine's victory plan. We have this info from some of the German media sources. Also, the German Chancellor emphasized that nothing will change his position regarding the supply of the Taurus long-range cruise missiles to Ukraine. So there is a big difference between the approach of the United States and Germany. Even though Germany supplies lots of the weaponry for Ukraine, but it usually doesn't want to escalate. Yes, the escalation sometimes is also good if it is coming from our allies or from Ukraine, because we shouldn't allow Russia only to escalate. On the other hand, the United States of America is supplying long-range range tools for Ukraine. Yes, it is not yet allowing for Ukraine to use the long-range missiles on the Russian territory, but Ukraine uses those very effectively on its own occupied territories against the Russian bases, supplies and so on. So America really helps a lot. Plus, the United States has supported the victory plan of Zelensky officially, John Kirby said about it in the meeting, and that includes the NATO membership, or it's better to say the invitation of Ukraine to NATO. But obviously there will be the resistance from the other countries, and that is why the invitation is not coming in the nearby future. What have Russia said about those plans? Well, they do not support the accession of Ukraine to NATO. They support the neutral status, the resolution of the problem of the Russian-speaking population. So again, they use the language in their needs to excuse their intervention to Ukraine. At the same time, they bound the Russian-speaking populated cities like Mariupol, causing lots of the devastation. So mostly, yes, the Russian regions are suffering because of Russia. And here they say a lot about the native language, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I also speak Russian, but I don't like Russia, at least under the current Russian government, because those are definitely dictators and evil dictators who attack the nearby countries. Now they also speak that they will not accept any option that Ukraine retains the ability to be used by the West to create direct threat to Russian Federation. So basically, they want to get rid of Ukraine because Ukraine is leaning towards the West. It is not yet a democracy like the United States or the Western European countries, especially during the war. But Ukraine and the Ukrainian people are heading towards that type of the development, the democratic development, not a dictatorship. And Russia wants to slave Ukraine to get it out from so-called Western influence. That's their only point. So they want to put their puppet government or take Ukraine by force. Yes, we have some of the combat images available, but just on my Telegram channel here I cannot show you what happened to this BTR. It was actually the attempt of the Russian army to advance in Zaporizhia direction. Recently we got the information that Russia is preparing for the assaults and now they are searching for the weak spots in the Ukrainian defense, so probably they are gonna start a larger offensive operation, but for now all of their small attacks just failed. It seems like Russians continued their suicide BMP or BTR attacks on Ukrainian tanks in the Kursk region. For example, this light armored vehicle was heading towards the Ukrainian tank and as you can see it was kaboomed by Ukrainian tanks. Because of the heavy losses, the Russian soldiers just leave their positions. For example, those two are saying that they were ordered by their drunk commander to go and finish themselves in a straightforward meat attack. So they left the positions and now hiding somewhere in the building, probably on the occupied territory, and they record the video about the bad situation in the Russian army. Russians continue to test the armored vests which are sent to them by the Russian army. They comment that not just that those armored vests are useless, but they are also damn heavy compared to the previous model. So probably Russia is running out of the good quality supplies for their soldiers. Before the armor vests were supplied from China and now it is the Russian made plate which is useless as you see. CNN came out with an interesting report for the first time showing the Ukrainian kamikaze drones Luti. Luti means some rage and evil, I would say, in combination. Ukraine makes those drones on its factories, and as you can see, they require the runway for takeoff. They're basically like the airplanes, and they're also quite big. Well, Shahi drones do not require the runway for takeoff. 
As you can see, Ukraine is capable to produce lots of those looted drones. I would say that those drones are more complicated compared to the Shahid drones because at least they have the landing gear. And about the price of the drone, it's kind of hard to say. It all depends on what is inside, electronics, controls and so on. As you can see, the frame itself looks like the Bayraktar TB2, but no, it's the Luti drone from Ukraine. Great news from France, we have one more confirmation from their officials that Ukraine will obtain Mirage 2000 fighter jets as early as the beginning of 2025, so quite soon in a few months. So it means that the pilot training was ongoing secretly in France. Great news, there was a big exchange of the prisoners of war, 95 of the Ukrainian soldiers returned home. Some of them were in the Russian custody for more than two years. Luckily, the Azov soldiers also were among those who were exchanged, but there are still around 900 of the Azov soldiers in the Russian prisons. Guys, again, I highly recommend you to check out the video description just below, where you may find my personal link for the ground news. By supporting the ground news, you also support the job that I do daily on YouTube. And now, as usual, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.